Happy New Year. 2024 is here. Um, we've been busy. Uh, our last MTP was in October. I apologize. We're way behind on answering uh, your questions, but it, it was a uh, it was an interesting end of the year. We were extremely busy. Um, and we, we're going to start out with um, that last odyssey for prostate cancer patients, which is, you know, addressing um, erectile dysfunction that it can occur afterwards. And uh, there was a, a email from Scott, Scott B. Okay. And this is back in December 18th. So Scott, I hope you're watching this. And, and there's some, the syntax here is, it, it's interesting. Um, let, let me just read some of what he writes. Uh, first, I really like your informative program. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, many of us prostate cancer patients are looking for just about anything to not only restore as much original size as possible, but other alternatives to make it just comfortable sitting down without your penis retracting back into your abdomen because of the prostatectomy. He talks about um, a men's health expert in his area who's excellent, uh, recommending a, a vacuum pump. Um, you know, I'm sure he also recommended daily Cialis. Uh, these are rehabilitative things that you can do for a penis. Um, and then he goes on to say, I had no idea that removing my prostate would re require pulling two ends of the urethra together to close the space where the prostate used to be. Um, and he says, but sometimes painting a picture that one can understand would make sense and could make for a better outcome from everyone, meaning that his oncologist would actually discuss these things. So let me go back to some of the work that we've done. And I don't read, you know, oncology stuff, and I'm sure that they don't read enough. Uh, that these oncologists don't read our sexual medicine stuff as much as we all should. I can tell you that we have presented in 2018 some data showing that if you have erectile dysfunction following a uh, prostatectomy, and if at three months you get what's called a Doppler study, where we look at the flow in and out of the penis, and if you have something called a leak, veno-occlusive disease, you're not going to get better. So that's when you need to start talking about uh, a penile implant. The other thing, which Scott, you so uh, nicely articulated, is that yes, you do lose some length immediately following uh, a prostatectomy because you do have to close that gap with the urethra. But even when you take into consideration that loss, when following the patient the day after the procedure, everybody, no matter what you do, no matter what sort of rehabilitative measures you take, whether it's a uh, you know, vacuum device, traction device, uh, daily Cialis, everybody loses length. And the, the paper that I've quoted, I know in previous MTPs, is once, one, once rent rendered impotent, you're going to lose 0.5 to 5 centimeters in length in about 14 months. And that's a paper that was written out of my alma mater. And it is, it's just fact. Everybody loses length and girth. So, Scott, thank you for 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 doing this and for all of our you know followers and people that uh, might be just watching this for the first time this is information to disseminate to your friends because i apologize uh, alfie and i dr suarez Somiento and i have been very busy we need to publish this and we need to publish it in the journal of urology so our oncologist uh, uh colleagues can actually you know take this into consideration when they're talking to their patients. So Scott, spread the word of MTP81 because that, what a great question and, and, and thank you very much for providing us with this topic.